We can start now. Is my voice audible? We can start. All right, good evening, everyone. I know it's been a long day, and you have just come back um, from, uh, you know, the biggest exam of your life for this year. And we will be quickly moving ahead with uh, polity questions and uh, international relations questions. This year, the trend has changed a bit. The polity questions have been kind of de-emphasized by UPSC. So there are only about 10 to 11 questions this year. Uh, it's a marked, uh, you know, um, reduction from the last year. However, at the same time, there is another trend that shows that the international relations based questions have increased and more so from the current news. So, this trend has not been seen earlier with the UPSC uh, prelims exams, but this year, as we move on with the session, we'll know that a uh, lot of places in news and especially for international relations and some of the organization and some of the organization of United Nations have been asked, you know, in about seven to eight questions of international relations. That's a huge jump from, say, one or two questions in previous years. So we'll begin with the polity first. Polity, um, some of the questions, so the uh, out of 11 questions, some of the questions were fairly easy in the sense that they were directly from your syllabus as such. The others, if you had a presence of mind, then they were easily solvable through elimination. While some of the questions have been, one or two questions have been really difficult, you might have, you know, skipped it. But let's have a look at all the questions right now. The first question we see is 11th, consider the following statements. Now, in every question, and I'm sure you would have mastered this by now, you need to work with elimination first. Um, you know, skip the statements that you are unsure of moving down towards statements that you might recognize as familiar. So let's look at it here. Pursuant to the report of uh, H.N. Sanya Al committee, the Contempt Act was passed. Even if you don't know this, park it for a while and move on to the next statement. The Constitution of India empowers the Supreme Court and High Court to punish for contempt of itself, which is a correct statement. So we have article 129 and 215 um, related to this, right? And uh, where uh, Supreme Court and High Court are seen as court of records. And Supreme Court has said that any court, uh, whether it is Supreme Court, High Court or any other court, which is a court of record, can have, can issue directions for the com contempt of itself or issue punishment for the contempt of itself. So this we know is a correct uh, statement. Now let's look at here, it brings us to these two, right? The Constitution of India defines civil and, con and criminal contempt. Now we all know that if we have read the, uh, you know, all, all the articles related and we have done it, uh, you know, in our natural course of study related to judiciary, we find that the Constitution does not, you know, define uh, civil and criminal contempt. It is done by the contempt, contempt of court act 1971. So this we eliminate. And so here also we are eliminating. Let's look at the fourth uh, statement. In India, the parliament is vested with power to make laws and contempt. Yes, pursuant to this, the, con uh, the parliament has made contempt of courts act 1971. So even if we have read something because it was there in the news last year also, on account of uh, advocate uh, Prashant Bhushan, 
right and this year also in various points uh, supreme court has been asserting that you know the um, uh, contempt of court is the constitutional you know powers given to the supreme court it cannot be taken away so it has been in news in that regard so in india the parliament is vested we have two and four as correct answers here the only option that gives us both of these are one two and four so automatically if you don't know one if you don't know one then you can work with elimination and whatever you know about the act or know about the term right so pursuant to a report of hn sanyal uh, this act was really passed the um, committee was set up in 1961 it gave it gave its report in 1963 and that is how the contempt of court act was finally brought into being so the answer is b let's move on to the next one with reference to india consider the following statement now this um, is one of those questions where probably you would have skipped and it's completely okay to do so but uh, let's let's work with uh, you know whatever we know so the first one is government law officers and legal firms are recognized as advocate whereas corporate lawyers and patent attorneys are excluded now there has been um, now we are also you know trying to figure it out as of now but uh, you see that uh, there is an advocates act uh, uh, on the basis of which uh, they recognize the advocate who can be an advocate and uh, you know what are their roles and powers and obligations etc um, but nowhere it has been explicitly said that the corporate lawyers cannot be advocate so they just have to you know uh, uh, take a license from the bar council to become an advocate uh, if a corporate lawyer has it then probably they you know it, they they are uh, come in the category of advocate so uh, the possible answer for this may be two wherein uh, we are only saying that the second option is correct the bar council have power to lay down the rules related to legal education and recognition of law colleges this is correct under the bar council of india and the advocates act uh, every state has certain bar councils and they are responsible for uh, you know regulating the legal conduct or legal practice as well as the legal education so this is correct with respect to this uh, the jury is still out and according to us the right answer is to and we still believe that the corporate lawyers can be you know categorized into the uh, uh, you know the the uh, box of uh, advocates so for us this but you may never know this may also be the correct answer so we are parking it for now here let's move on to the next <clears throat> this is a fairly simple one so we all have been you know the right at the start where we started our preparation we have already done constitutional amendment bill kya hota hai so this is under article 368 a bill amending the constitution requires prior recommendation of president of india we know that this is incorrect um, other bills that might require recommendation is money bill and also you know the bill that changes or alters the name and you know the geography the boundaries of states but for constitution amendment bill uh, no such requirement is uh, there so we will just strike this off and we can clearly strike off this and we get to our answers 2 and 3 even then let's have a look at the other statements when a constitution amendment bill is presented to the president of india it is obligatory for the president to give his his or her assent this is true because the government uh, the uh, president cannot withhold the assent right and nor it can send the bill uh, back to the uh, you know the house so this is correct Uh, very simple question article 368 mein ye completely diya hua hai uh, a constitution amendment bill must be passed by both both the lok sabha and the rajya sabha by a special majority we know that this is correct and there is no provision for joint sitting so of course there is no provision for joint sitting because uh, in case of you know divergence in views between the lok sabha and rajya sabha obviously lok sabha has a greater majority so kind of a joint sitting would kind of tilt it in favor of lok sabha therefore a you know a logical uh, uh, you know outcome of this is that there is no joint sitting so they pass the bill individually of each other exclusive of each other so the answer to this is b very very simple and straight forward question moving on to the next so consider the following statement 
the constitution classifies the ministers into four ranks okay. be be uh, you know aware of the words that are being used here whether it is statutory provision or mandatory provision or constitutional provisions we have to be very very careful what the words what words have been used here so the constitution of india constitution of india classifies ministers into four ranks cabinet minister etc please understand that the constitution does not give such categorization and it is a fairly simple question because in your normal course of preparation also you must have come across this that the cabinet the word cabinet is used only once in the entire constitution and that is only when you know there is national emergency under article 352 and uh, the president can issue a proclamation only after a written recommendation of the cabinet union cabinet that's the only time they have mentioned cabinet in the whole scheme of constitutional provisions other than that the constitution does not give any such categorization so this is in effect wrong now coming on to the next the total number of ministers in union government including the prime minister shall not exceed 15% a very state of the cuff kind of a question article 72 jaise wahan pe hai waise waise yahan pe likh diya hai we know that uh, this is a correct statement so yes 15% this is a constitutional mandate under article 72 so our answer here is b again right let's have a look at the other question right which of the following are the exclusive power exclusive power of lok sabha exclusive would mean that rajya sabha does not have any power with respect to that particular item right so first of all to ratify the declaration of emergency we have read emergency we know that both lok sabha and rajya sabha are required to pass the proclamation of emergency so this is wrong this is not an exclusive domain of lok sabha the second one is to pass a motion of no confidence against council of ministers so yes this is correct only because we know that the council of ministers are collectively responsible to the lok sabha and therefore any kind of no confidence motion also will be originated in lok sabha and not rajya sabha so this is correct the third one is to impeach the president of india so the the uh, you know the proceedings to impeach the president of india can you know originate in any of the houses and the matter is referred to the other house there is of course a, a kind of inquiry and so both the houses are involved so the right answer here would be only two so the answer here again is b moving on let's have a look at the 16th question with reference to anti defection law the anti defection law we have been reading year after year whether it is for prelims or mains so this should be this we should know like the back of our hands uh, by now so with reference to anti defection law which is the 10th schedule consider the following statements the law specifies that the nominated legislator cannot join any political party within within 6 months of being appointed now uh, when you have read uh, anti defection law and the 10th schedule you would see that it gives a certain categories of uh, you know people uh, whether it is you know a sitting uh, uh, minister or it is the nominated member or it is an independent member who has been elected to the house right so these categories they have different you know grounds of of being uh, you know uh, proceeded with under anti defection law so particularly for nominated legislator legislator they cannot join the any party after 6 months not within if they join it within 6 months is perfectly okay they would not be considered as defectors right under anti defection law so after 6 months if a nominated member uh, you know joins any other party political party then they are said to be defectors so this is wrong right the law does not provide any time frame within which the presiding officer has to decide a defection case this is correct and if you had read it uh, you know as a as an issue uh, of anti defection law um, it is also one of the criticisms that there is no uh, you know time frame within which um, the the uh, you know the speaker uh, or the presiding officer has to give uh, you know their uh, uh, 
has to decide on the defection case. There have been multiple cases in the in the present, and therefore you would see that this is also for a kind of uh, you know a current affairs based uh, question as well. So if you are keeping updated with the le recent developments, then these kind of static topics also continue to you know um, uh, appear in your current affairs as well. So the answer for this is only two. The law does not provide for time frame. For a, uh, a sitting council, uh, a sitting minister uh, is said to have defected when either they resign or they are not in, you know, conformity with the whip of the, uh, you know, the party. So they can be, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, categorized as defectors under anti-defection. For independent members, if they, uh, uh, independent, uh, you know, members of the house, if they immediately join a party. Right after the election, if they join a party, then they are said to have defected, right? So they will be proceeded against this law accordingly. Moving on, all right. Again, a personal favorite of UPSC. Um, so here we have um, Attorney General of India. So we all know that you know there's a article, uh, you know, ca categorically mentioned for uh, Attorney General, and which is Article 76, so where the Attorney General, of course, is the senior most, uh, uh, you know, the legal member. And uh, so we know that Attorney General are the only officer and Solicitor General are the only officers of the government who are allowed to participate in the meeting of parliament. We know that advocate, Attorney General to hai, but Solicitor General nahi hai, right? So this, this statement becomes wrong. According to the Constitution of India, the Attorney General submits his resignation when the government which appoints him resigns. Now, this shows that the, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it, it, what the statement is, um, if you apply our minds, is basically saying that he's part of the government. And the government resigns and the person uh, also has to resign. But this is not the case under the article uh, uh, related to Attorney General. Uh, the Attorney General stays in the office during the pleasure of the President nothing to do with the government as such, right? So the answer here again is B2 only. This is incorrect. Let's have a look at the other question. Fairly simple questions if you have, uh, you know, read up your basics and uh, if you have applied your, uh, you know, uh, presence of mind during the exam, is it will, uh, you know, with, with calm mind, you are able to eliminate well. And this I have said time and again, that alertness and reduction in, you know, anxiety, your mind becomes more calm and you are more, uh, you know, amenable to bring out answers through el elimination. And I'm sure you would have done it today as well. So let's move on to the 18th question with reference to the writs issued by the courts. So writs, of course, under Article 32 and, you know, for the High Court also, um, uh, they are a part of, uh, you know, part three of the constitution, the fundamental rights. So we've all gone through, you know, those uh, writs and yahape they have asked for just two of them. So it makes life easy for us. The mandamus will not lie against a private organization unless it is trusted, entrusted with a public duty. Now we know that mandamus mean we command. So the Supreme Court or the High Court would command a particular, you know, it could be a, a, a public official, it could be a public body, it could be a public organization, right, it could be, a, you know, an inferior uh, court, right. So mandamus will be, but it is only against public officials and bodies. It cannot be mandated against private individuals or organizations. So this is correct. Mandamus will not lie against a company even though it may be a government company. Mandamus applies to public companies, uh, the government companies, right? So the public officials, the public bodies, the government owned companies, right? So here, if it is a government company, the mandamus will apply to it. So this is a wrong statement. Yes, um, these are common sense. These are not explicitly mentioned here. Of course, UPSC will not throw, uh, you know, direct questions sometimes. So, thoda sa ghuma fira ke bola hai, but the crux is that it has to be a government company or a public company or uh, a company which has a public duty to serve. Then only the mandibus will apply to it. 
any public minded person can be a petitioner to move the courts to obtain quo warranto quo warranto means by what authority if a person is occupying a particular you know public office illegally then you can go and ask and it could be any other public spirited person need not be another you know uh, public official right so this statement is also correct so the answer is 1 and 3 only right <coughs> moving on now they have thrown in one uh, uh, government scheme in here but even if you don't know of course we've given our uh, you know there was this booklet on uh, uh, government schemes the uh, recently released government schemes and it had this but even if you had not uh, you know uh, gone through this uh, scheme um, by simply trying to apply your mind and understanding you know the government's intent and the supreme court's orders you know judgments in the past you'll be able to assess this it says that with reference to ayushman bharat the digital mission consider the following statements private and public hospitals must adopt it must adopt it right that's the underlying word ki karna hi karna hai matlab they have no option to exclude themselves out of now these this uh, ayushman bharat digital mission was born out of national health policy uh, where it, it where it uh, you know focused on digital Uh, digitizing the health infrastructure as such right so it was not mandating anything they can adopt but at this point it is only at the pilot stage so it is only saying that uh, you know there is a provision for both public and private uh, institutions to join it hospitals to join it but it's not been made mandatory as such as of now and as it aims to achieve universal health coverage every citizen of india should be the kind of making it mandatory ki har citizen ko enroll hona hi hai now remember that in case of digital anything to do with digital uh, the prime concern of you know privacy uh, comes up and therefore the consent of the people is required even for aadhar you see there was a long drawn you know judicial battle over it and the right of privacy was you know was a crowning jewel it emerged as one and therefore if you say that every citizen should be part of it ultimately it's a vision that you know people will be encouraged to join it but without consent uh, their unique ids cannot be made so again this is incorrect it has seamless portability across the country which is one of the you know the objectives of uh, digital health policy as well uh, in case of uh, india so we would only say that the third statement is correct right so for this i would go with option b as the correct option okay <clears throat> next very quickly then so this was a question on deputy speaker it was in news as well uh, this year there there was uh, you know a lot of uh, you know kind of current affairs around deputy chairman deputy speaker you know the speakers at the uh, state levels the houses are, houses are at the state levels so uh, this was also in news and therefore they have just asked it so you see much of uh, the questions these this year has not you know come from you know like a static background but they have been aligned to what was there in the news right so uh, deputy speaker was also there now even if you don't know much about deputy speaker i'm sure you must have gone through the options to start eliminating and that's the only way to go about it let's try it with elimination and see where we go so as per the rules of procedures and conduct the election of the deputy speaker shall be held on such date as the speaker may fix assuming that we don't know it we'll park it there is a mandatory provision that the election of a candidate shall be from either principal opposition now you see there is a mandatory provisions if you look at um, you know if you have read polity and you've absorbed how uh, conventions are made then things like these are left best to convention and normal practice rather than a mandatory provision right so this is more of a convention rather than a mandatory provision if and and there have been various other ways you know various other cases where we have seen that there is no mandate it's such for certain provisions right jaise ki agar kisi cheez ka you know uh what would be you know done on the first day of uh, you know the the session these are all normal normative conventions that are formed 
right so we can you know kind of eliminate this here the deputy speaker has the same power as that of speaker when presiding over normally we've also seen that when one person assumes the roles and responsibility of the other the the position gives it all the powers that was given to the you know previous incumbent so we'll say that the deputy speaker has the same power as that of speaker of course because when when the person is assuming the position it he must he or she must have that power naturally to you know conduct the business otherwise with lesser power you are you're not able to conduct the business that has been earlier conducted by the speaker right the same powers to honi chahiye agar house ko function karna hai us tarike se uh, fourth the well established parliamentary practice regarding the appointment of deputy speaker is that the motion is moved by speaker and duly seconded by the prime minister normally itni choti moti cheezon ke liye prime minister ki second nahi hota hai if you have seen any convention so far or any uh, you know um, appointments or uh, motions as, as such that have been passed prime minister ka aisa koi specific rule kisi mein bhi nahi hai so we can say that this statement can be wrong so if we if we by elimination or by educated guess even if we move you know try to eliminate these two two and four right we arrive at one and three so we can say that and this is actually correct as per uh, the rules of procedure the deputy the election of the deputy speaker shall be on a date as the speaker may fix right so this is correct and this is also correct that he has the same power as a speaker when he is conducting his Uh, the speaker's, uh, you know, uh, when he's filling in speaker's shoes, right? So the answer to this is A. Let's then quickly move on to the other questions. So these were the ten questions for polity, and there was one more. Uh, it was question number seventy-three. UPSC has dispersed the questions this time in a very weird manner so let's see all right so this is one question again uh, it's more to do with the uh, you know presence of mind and simple understanding of how you know what what is there in the constitution simple logic right so if a particular area is brought under the fifth schedule of the constitution which of the following statement best re reflects the consequence Ma uh, the consequence mandatorily hona chahiye so it, it is not an option right so let's have a look at first this would prevent the transfer of land of tribal people to non tribal people now it categorically says in the fifth schedule under fifth schedule that uh, you know certain things are uh, prevented from taking effect one of these is the transfer of land of tribal people to do. now when we look at this this would lead to a local self governing body it is not a natural consequence aisa nahi hoga aap fifth schedule mein pahunch gaye to aapko local governing body mil jayegi local self governing body mil jayegi there is a tribal advisory council but it is an advisory uh, uh, capacity and please be sure that this is asking about fifth schedule and not sixth schedule where you know certain councils autonomous councils have been formed तो ये थोड़ा ट्रैप एरिया है इसको अवॉइड करेंगे थैंक यू द आंसर टू दिस इज ए मूविंग ऑन दिस कंप्लीट्स आर पॉलिटी लेट्स क्विकली हैव अ लुक एट इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस एंड आल्सो गेट एन इनसाइड इनटू व्हाट यूपीएससी हैड आस्क्ड दिस ईयर अ लॉट ऑफ यू नो क्वेश्चंस हैव बीन डिराइव्ड फ्रॉम द करंट न्यूज इन फैक्ट जो क्वेश्चन के वर्डिंग्स है वही लिखा है कि रिसेंटली इन न्यूज यूजुअली हम लोग आईआर को अवॉइड करके चलते हैं एंड दिस ईयर आल्सो बिकॉज द मीडिया हैज बीन यू नो ट्रूली एंड होली एंड सोली फोकसिंग ऑन यूक्रेन एंड रशिया एंड यू नो अर्लियर अफगानिस्तान एंड एवरीथिंग एंड दीज आर लाइक वे स्मॉल स्मॉल न्यूज बिट्स दैट अपियर्ड एंड देन वैनिश्ड फ्रॉम द न्यूज एज वेल and therefore it did not capture the interest or attention of many of us right but uh, upsc has uh, taken a note and it has you know uh, brought it into the questions so let's see and then prepare uh, ourselves for you know um, how upsc plans to work right so let's look at uh, question number 76 
with reference to United Nation Credentials Committee, consider the following statements. Right. <coughs> so it's a, it's a new concept uh, in the sense that uh, we have not read it in normal course of our uh, you know study. Um, so it's a, it, it is a credentials committee. Uh, it was in news because of uh, Afghanistan and Myanmar. Afghanistan, of course, because uh, of Taliban. Taliban had you know nominated an envoy to United Nations, and Myanmar. You would know that there was a military coup, and therefore the representatives to the UN they had to uh, you know uh, go undergo you know a credentials check uh, by United Nations. So the credentials committee basically goes into the background and the credentials of whether it want to host the representatives of certain countries. In this case, Taliban uh, did present them such challenge and also uh, Myanmar, right? So the credentials committee is set up by United Nations Security Council and works under its supervision. This statement is incorrect because it is set up by United Nations General Assembly and not Security Council, right? So the, all the members. Um, are a part of it. So uh, they nominate about nine members uh, of the credentials committee and they carry out a background check and do whatever the investigation and report to the general assembly who then take a vote and decide whether or not you know a certain decision should go uh, in a certain direction. Right? So this is a committee set up by UNGA. It is traditionally meets, so if you, even if you know that it is from general assembly you would know that uh, it, it would meet, uh, you know, just before uh, the assembly, a special session as such, ho sakta hai, but in general course of things, uh, jab, uh, uh, general assembly meets once a year. Usse pehle, kyunki general assembly ne ye committee banai hai, to usko report wo usi session se pehle karti hai, taki people can come and vote, the members can come and vote, right? So it traditionally meets in March, June and September, so this is not correct. Okay. Because general assembly ka session saal mein ekhi baar hota hai, wo bhi around September mein hota hai. So this we can conveniently mark as incorrect. Right. So this is incorrect, this is incorrect. It assesses the credentials of all UN members before submitting a report to general assembly for approval. So this is, this portion is correct and therefore the answer is A. Not something that we have you know, caught an, you know, uh, that has caught an eye uh, during our preparation. But, uh, you know, uh, certain aspects, for example, you could see the contradiction if 3 is correct, then this is not correct, right. So, uh, if you have attempted this question or you have not attempted, but uh, this is the, this is what the key has to say, right. Moving on, okay, this is polar code, uh, not very recently in news, but yes, it has been off and on in the news, it is. Uh, you know, again, uh, it's a UN agency. Uh, if you have heard of International Maritime Organization, it talks about you know the maritime uh, kind of regulations on shipping, etc. Then you would know that you know Polar Code is something that uh, IMO had come up with, and if it is IMO, then it has to do something with ships only, right? So it is the International Code of Safety for ships operating in polar waters. That is what it is, right? So it is, it is given by the International Maritime Organization, which is, um, you know, an agency of uh, United Nations. So read up on, I mean, the next, next learning that we can possibly have is read up on United Nations, um, you know, agencies uh, in a, a little more than what is, you know, what we have been uh, traditionally reading, right. The next is, with reference to United Nations General Assembly, this is a fairly simple one, predictable also, and uh, you know, uh, agar apne international relations pad rahe hoge, so this is but natural ke you would have come across this, and it's a fairly uh, simple question. Uh, so it says that the United Nations General Assembly can grant observer status to non-member state. This is correct, and we know that Vatican City, also <coughs> Palestine, you know. So these are not states as such, uh, um, you know, full, full, full uh, states, they are not there and therefore cannot be members. Palestine, of course, it hasn't been recognized as a state as of now, right? And Vatican City is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, 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 you know, it's not a state, right? So Pope, uh, it's mostly a Pope's country, right? 
So these two countries have been kept as uh, observers, permanent observers of General Assembly. What they can do is they can participate in the discussion, they can host their missions there, uh, but they cannot vote, right? So they can be part of the entire deliberation, uh, you know, setup, but not vote, right? Somewhat like Attorney General, maybe, right? So the the this is correct. The intergovernmental organization ca uh, can seek observer status in UN General Assembly. Now, this has to do with current affairs. Recently, the International Solar Alliance got an observer stated status with, uh, you know, United uh, with United Nations, right? So they got um, uh, an observer status, and therefore we know that uh, you know the intergovernmental organization. There have been many others. There is uh, European Union. Then there are various UN agencies like WHO, IMF. All of these are also intergovernmental inter uh, organizations that have observer status in UNGA, right, in the assembly. So this is also correct. Then let's have a look at the third one. Permanent observers in UN General Assembly can maintain mission. So I've already said that uh, the permanent members, for example, Palestine and uh, Vatican City, they can participate, they can deliberate, you know, uh, but they cannot uh, vote. So, and they can establish their missions also. So, all three are correct. The answer to this is D. Okay. Let's move on to the next. Kind of dispersed question schemes. So, I think we have one at 83. Right. This has been in news. This has been in news. See, even uh, because of Ukraine and Russian, uh, you know, conflict, Turkey has emerged to be a kind of, you know, um, unpredictable uh, player, right? So it's kept its uh, cards very close to itself. It is creating a mark for itself also eventually. I mean, last year, or uh, you know, it started um, rebranding its Turkey, Turkish uh, council into something that is called as the Organization of Turkic States. Now, what is this Organization of Turkic States? Basically, the members are uh, Turkic uh, speaking states. So, these are primarily the Central Asian Republics. So, isko yaad kaise karna hai? Tukka marge. Right? So, you have Turkey, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Azerbaijan, right. These are the members of the organization of Turkic states. When you have to learn about the, uh, you know, the organization, try to get into mnemonics and you'll, you'll be able to understand. Now, this has been in news and it has played a very uh, uh, kind of uh, surprise, uh, you know, a surprising role both for China because China has been, you know, backing the Shanghai Corporation Organization, SCO, and Russia, which is Eurasian Economic Union. So, it has been promoting and both of them are trying to collaborate with Central Asian Republic uh, areas, right? So, um, SCO, you would already know that uh, the uh, Central Asian Republics have been, you know, co uh, uh, collaborating with or cooperating on various kinds of military uh, this thing uh, to, to remove uh, terrorism, insurgency, separatism, etc. Similarly, for organization of Turkic states, they have the same agenda. So, it is kind of conflicting with the China's and remember that Uyghur uh, population in China is also Turkic speaking, right. So, for China, it kind of makes it a little uh, uneasy uh, when, when Turkey goes this way, right. It has been expressing concerns about the state of um, Uyghur Muslims in China, right, kind of, uh, you know, calling out China on certain issues, uh, related issues. And for Russia also, um, it's, it's kind of, so you see that it is the, the broad plan of Turkey to have some influence around uh, this, uh, the CAR region, right. So therefore, this was in the news. So uh, consider the following countries. We know that agar hum tukka mare to Azerbaijan is there and Uzbekistan is there. So, the answer is 2 and 5, right. So, the answer is C. Moving on. So,
ये वाला तो काफी पुराना और सिंपल क्वेश्चन है विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट बेस्ट रिफ्लेक्ट दूस विद सिंकाको आईलैंड समटाइम्स मैंशन इन द न्यूज तो हमें पता है कि ईस्ट चाइना स्ट्री में वी हैव चाइना एंड जापान फाइटिंग ओवर सिंकाको आईलैंड राइट सो इट इज जनरली बिलीव दैट दे आर आर्टिफिशियल आईलैंड मेड बाई द कंट्री अराउंड साउथ चाइना सी नहीं है ईस्ट चाइना सी है राइट चाइना एंड जापान इंगेज इन मैरी टाइम डिस्प्यूट ओवर दीज इन ईस्ट चाइना सी सो सी इफ यू ऑलरेडी नो दिस देन इट्स बिकम अ केक वॉक फॉर यू इट्स एन ईजी गेनर हियर द परमानेंट अमेरिकन मिलिट्री बेस नहीं है ये नहीं है राइट सो द आंसर इज बी सो फॉर आंसर फॉर एटी सिक्स इज बी now this is uh, where i say that uh, you know upsc has really up the ante and you know asking questions uh, on countries where uh, you know we have not been very attentive to we have not been attentive to such countries uh, in the news also and the newspapers also have not been very attentive but uh, it it is a lesson that we we need to you know broaden our horizon look beyond the the usual wars and uh, what is what is uh, you know uh, kind of casting its shadow over the uh, news here so chote chote countries ko me kya kya ho raha hai ye bhi hame dekhna padega so for uh, and and this time also uh, upsc has come up with a certain pattern so it's asking ki kaun se kitne pairs isme correct hain one pair two pair so match the following bhi nahi ho raha hai which of them are correctly matched wo bhi nahi ho raha hai so it's asking about pairs and all right सेम चीज है बट अलग वर्डिंग में है सो नथिंग टू बरी इफ यू नो दंसर यू नो दू डोट नो यू स्किप राइट तो यहाँ पे तो यू कैन डिस्कस बट इट इज अ फेयरली डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन अगर नहीं सुना है न्यूज में तो यहाँ पे उन्होंने वन टू वन टू थ्री ऑप्शन वो सब भी नहीं दिया देन इट बिकम्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू मेक अ यू नो अ गेस बट लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट इट चैट सेटिंग अप ऑफ अ परमानेंट मिलिट्री बेस्ड बाय चाइना इट वॉज बेसिकली इन इक्वटोरियल गिनी राइट नॉट चैड तो यहाँ पे चाइना ने अपना मिलिट्री बेस बनाया था गिनी सस्पेंशन ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड गवर्नमेंट बाय मिलिट्री दिस इज करेक्ट तो वेरी रिसेंटली यू नो देर वॉज अ मिलिट्री कू हियर एंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वॉज सस्पेंडेड लेमन एंड सेवरल सिवियर एंड प्रोलॉन्ग इकोनॉमिक डिप्रेशन इट हैज बीन वन ऑफ द वर्स्ट डिप्रेशन एंड इकोनॉमिक यू नो काइंड ऑफ डिप्रेशन इन दी इन इन एनी एनी कंट्री Uh, possibly you know it, it's being said that top 3 countries in may economic depression itna severe hai um, you know lebanon is one of them and about 74 to 75% of the population is reeling under poverty and that's the size of you know the crisis so yes lebanon severe and prolonged economic depression um lebanon was also kind of importing a lot of wheat and other items from ukraine and russia itna 80 to 90% of their imports used to come from there and as a result of this war again it further you know exacerbated the uh, crisis for lebanon which was already doing very poorly on its economic indicators tunisia suspension of parliament by the president this is also correct so the answer is these three are correct so we can say that only three pairs are correct let's see what else do we have again you see uh, specifically upsc bol raha hai ki in the news hai so again it's it's a it's a lesson that choti moti countries jo bhi news mein hai um, uh, you know uh, kya ho raha hai uh, apart from uh, you know ukraine russia and uh, uh, you know americas and other, the big countries chote chote european countries mein kya ho raha hai fir african countries mein kya ho raha hai right ek uh, you know we we need to keep a you know a tap on the on the these small news as well kab uh, you know upsc pooch le it's a it's it would be an easy um, kind of attempt if if we uh, you know have a look at these hindsight mein ye bol sakte hain uh, uh, bhagwan kare aapko dusra attempt na dena pade but it is a learning for future and for anybody who is seeing this right uh regions often mentioned in the news to so anatolia we know that definitely it is turkey so ye correct hai amhara amhara ethiopia it is correct cabo delgado this is not correct this is not in spain but uh, we can say that uh, 
it's 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 a uh, you know a place a province which is not been i mean we we have not seen in news so much but it is from mozambique right it is from mozambique and not spain catalonia on the other hand is from spain right so italy nahi hai spain hai to ye do cheeze galat ho jayengi and the answer is only two pairs anatolia and amhara are the correct answers right i think we have completed all the international relations questions also and polity also i wish you all the best i hope i have been able to um, you know give you the correct answers of course upsc is the king and the keys are made by them but you have tried to research enough to give you the right answers and give you an insight and maybe we'll have one analysis where we can you know see the upsc trend this year and uh, the learnings that we might we might have for future so we'll do it in a consolidated manner and uh, we'll see you shortly and uh, all the best and maybe take a 3 or 4 days break and you know get cracking on your mains preparation also thank you